we have extended the, um, and shown enough patience over the years and the time has come that we have to show in a very uh, practical way in, in, in how, how we feel about all these impositions every year with salary increases. And our main concern here is about salary increases. Killer working section. Um, teachers for the first time will not be going into their pockets to buy chalk and cardboard and um, other things for their classroom. We're giving each child, each teacher, $4,000 per child per term. The cash grant has its benefits, but it's also come with backlash, a lot of backlash. In the sense that our education minister even made our remark that we're pocketing the money. We, we haven't, at least my school hasn't. We are going to be advising teachers that this is not, not a legal strike and that they should be careful with how they heed advice from people who are going down the road of making the union into a political entity. They wrote seeking um, first conciliation. You have to have a situation where firstly there's a breakdown between two parties and then you ask for conciliation. Not um, when we responded to that, the chief labor officer, uh, the last letter they wrote seeking arbitration. I mean, how do you reach the arbitration and you haven't even had conciliation? The other point is the um, chief labor officer cannot impose arbitration on parties. Arbitration, the two parties, they have to agree uh, to go to arbitration. That we would have written concerning uh, conciliation. We would have written concerning arbitration and in our last correspondence to the chief labor officer under whom um, that labor officer operates under the minister of labor. Two training to the honorable minister. Minister, how are you utilizing this year's budgetary allocation to guarantee that children in the hinterland receive the benefit of trained teachers? Honorable minister. I know. Yes, it's a very good question. I'm happy that the MP is representing the people that he has been sworn and here to represent. Oh, well, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. That we would have written concerning uh, conciliation. We would have written concerning arbitration. And in our last correspondence to the chief labor officer, under whom um, that labor officer operates under the minister of labor, and he refused to respond to us with regards to the call for arbitration. And this is mainly because there has been no collective bargaining. So to say in January uh, 2024 that the call is illegal and Ill illegitimate is quite, um, is quite shocking coming from the minister because correspondences have been sent to his office. We have followed all the protocols as it relates to the MOU between the Ministry of Education and the Guyana Teachers Union with regards to how do we settle uh, um, labor disputes and we have followed all of that. Hence, um, we are proceeding with our strike action and we do not see in any way that it is an illegal, um, act, wouldn't be an illegal activity. Teachers across the country are expected to go on strike from Monday, February 5th, and that action will last for 10 days. Speaking with this newscast, Union President Mark Light said this was the last resort for teachers and their union after many failed attempts. He said the union's position comes against the backdrop that there have been no definitive talks about the proposal submitted by the union since 2020. You know, the last time we had a strike in Guyana um, by the Guyana Teachers Union, that was in 2018. And that is after we would have exhausted a lot of time with regards to a task force, months and years of talking and having not seen any output. We have extended the same sort of patience with this government. Um, it has been over three years that we've been trying to talk, trying to coax government into arriving at a position where they can engage the union through the collective bargaining process. All of those attempts have failed. Hence, this is our last resort. 
Um, we know that there are some persons who are going to come out and say, oh, the teachers are unconscionable, oh, the teachers have forsaken the children. The children are always our, our first priority, but teachers also have needs. And we do not uh, believe that government has been acting favorably with the educators of this country who continue to put us on the map in the Caribbean and around the world through our performances. So I believe that um, we have extended the, um, and shown enough patience over the years and the time has come that we have to show in a very uh, practical way in, in, in how, how we feel about all these impositions every year with salary increases. And our main concern here is about salary increases and that which the union plays a part in coming up with what is uh, something that will be favorable in the eyes of our teachers at all levels and throughout the country. We are going to be advising teachers that this is not, not a legal strike and that they should be careful with how they heed advice from people who are going down the road of making the union into a political entity. They wrote seeking um, forced conciliation. You have to have a situation where firstly there's a breakdown between two parties and then you ask for conciliation. Not um, when we responded to that, the chief labor officer, uh, the last letter they wrote seeking arbitration. I mean, how do you reach the arbitration and you haven't even had conciliation? The other point is the um, chief labor officer cannot impose arbitration on parties. Arbitration, the two parties, they have to agree uh, to go to arbitration. Any strike, any strike that happens, it's illegal because GTU, they have failed to follow the procedures outlined by the law, not by Hamilton, by the labor law, what it says. So any Everybody has a right, perhaps even a duty to themselves and families to call for better salaries. But salaries are not the only way we can improve the lot of a particular working section. Um, teachers, for the first time, will not be going into their pockets to buy chalk and cardboard and um, other things for their classroom. We're giving each child, each teacher, $4,000 per child, per term, to cater for. So if a teacher has uh, 30 children in her classroom, that's $120,000 that she'll have for three months that will buy her chalk and so on that we know doesn't come up to $120,000. That's money the teacher gets to keep in our pocket because I know teachers were spending from their own pockets before. We are making sure promotions are done more frequently, which allows teachers personal growth as well as better salaries. We are making sure teachers have opportunities for training for their masters and PA. I don't like this situation. I don't like this situation one bit. You know why? Because somebody in this situation right here, whether it's Priya, Joseph, or Miss McDonald, or probably Mark, is being disingenuous. Somebody is not telling the truth because Joseph is saying nobody can contact them and let them know what's going on so that this so-called strike process could go through the lawful process of this step, then that step, then that step, then you step to striking, right? He say nobody informed us about this. Nobody told us about this. But Mark is saying, we tell y'all about this and y'all know that we've been disgruntled about our payment and our situation when it comes to our reimbursement for a while now because we've been sitting down with you guys and having a whole lot of dialogue but we're tired of talking we need money we don't want things to carry home or we don't want to hear that we get a benefit for go to school or x y or z we want finances we want to see that on our check we want to see that in our bank book we want to benefit from this budget in a real way. That's what they're saying. We had enough. And I think that teachers deserve anything 
that they're calling for right now in Guyana because it's been years and years that they've been going with less and without. Because we could look at some of the conditions that they work under and then think about the way that they're reimbursed for the effort that they put forward just for the service that they're providing alone. That money that you give them, no matter how much you give them, can't compensate them because they're molding the future of the country. So that's not even in the question, but we're just saying, all right, what are they asking for? See the best way that you could give them the best possible deal, no? Oh, they deserve it. It seems like somebody know this process and trying to go through the little holes them that they could go through to see how long they could stretch it out and possibly don't even give them no benefit. Try to exhaust them through the process. And I think I got an idea who know this process good enough because they used to be a teacher, you know. I think I got an idea who know this process good enough because they went through this process a number of times as the finance minister, you know. But I ain't gonna say no name, buddy. Because I ain't want to end up like bark on them. But you see this situation, eh? This situation got to be settled better. Because if we keep going around, going around, oh, you didn't say this, he didn't say that, or oh, I didn't get the information, or oh, we sent you the information, so we step in forward with the strike, we didn't get the information, so you can't strike, the strike is illegal. Oh, now nah, you get all of these benefits. Why do you still want to strike, as Ms. Priya is saying? Y'all get all of these benefits, opportunities for go to school. We're giving y'all all of these grants, X, Y, and Z. Why y'all still want to strike? Obviously, because they're not satisfied, they want more. They're saying that, you know what? Let me let you go into this video right now with a teacher. I'm going to let you hear it directly from a teacher. Because when you hear it directly from the teacher's mouth, you're going to get a different side of the story. You're going to get one of the realest side of the stories that you could get. Let me hear it directly from Miss Mouth. And let me hear what Miss saying about this cash grant. What Priya is saying they could keep some of the money. Do we hear if Miss saying that they keep some of the money if they get any of the money left over or we're really going on? Let me get right into this other video right here. And let's have a conversation in the comment section about this. How do you feel about this strike and what's going on in Guyana right now with these teachers and the money? My name is Nishavia Walcott. I am an assistant mistress attached to the Reading Hope Primary School. And I would like to share this message on my Facebook page only to be associated with the truth and not to be for my message to be misconstrued or misused or um, portrayed in any way other than what i'm trying to say so <laughs> i would like to reiterate what my former colleagues would have shared about the cash grant and its benefits to the children in the classroom it has benefited us professionally in the sense that we no longer have to walk around the corner to print our lesson plans and worksheet and we don't have to go out of pocket to do that because we use our cash grant to buy printers for each grade along with ink that will last us for the term and it has and it's been really beneficial if i say otherwise i would be lying we use we also use it to buy teaching aids teaching materials everything to elevate ourselves professionally now this is where i would divert from the opinions of others because in the sense that we're using the cash grant when i lock my classroom everything that i bought stays there everything that i've used the cash grant to do stays there it never went into my pocket we had to account for every cent that we were given uh and a senior teacher on staff came around with our receipts and we had to show her so that what we have in our classroom or what we bought reflects what the receipt has so everything was accounted for and we were congratulated for sticking to you know the stipulations that we were given this is where the problem is because we don't only want to benefit professionally we want to benefit personally these, um, this cash grant still goes towards the children. It goes towards making their um, academic experience easier, our professional experience easier. But when we go home, it does not follow us. 
we still want to benefit on a personal level and this is what the strike is about we need to benefit on a personal level and not a professional level the cash grant has its benefits but it's also come with backlash a lot of backlash in the sense that our education minister even made our remark that we're pocketing the money we we haven't at least my school hasn't my hm ensured that every cent was accounted for so when you think about what the, everybody else is saying about the strike and it's politically motivated at the end of the day i'm pretty sure 15 to 20 percent of the small businesses are from persons in the public sectors in the public sector because um we have to teach lessons we have to open shop online shopping businesses we have to drive taxi at the end of our work day just to try and make ends meet i cannot live on my salary i have to depend on my spouse to float me to the next month that is not something i would like to do when i'm working professionally i'm a trained teacher i train at C um, cpc currently studying at ug and I'm already looking for a, a, a business idea for when I graduate UG. Why? Because I know that even though it will benefit me financially, it still will not be enough. So, excuse me for sweating. I sweat a lot. Um, that's my message. And that is what I would like to be reflected. When you listen to me or when I say something, that is what I want you to understand is that the cash grant benefits us professionally we want personal benefits we want a benefit that when we go home our cupboards and our fridge is as stocked as the ones in school you miss saying miss says she wants she money she hand she want you but no cash grant and take off the little bit of extra we we'll come back from change and you are good with her and then she gotta try to figure out if she can get the type of headmistress that can want all the money spent in the school. Don't feel her kind of no money and them type of thing. Miss saying she wants she money in she pocket. She wants she money in she hand. She ain't want guy here, but wait for this um this new goal program for go to school and you're getting a scholarship for this and a scholarship for that. She said, nah, I want money. Because there's the things that I'm gonna need to take care of me. We care about the children them. We want to make sure that the children them is suffering in this whole situation, in this whole process. They are the most important things, right? But you know important as well? The teachers them. Because they used to be children too and they got children too. And they got things that they want to take care of, right? You can't be so disconnected from life that you can tell a person, take the little change off of the top and they helping for create the whole situation without teachers the nation has failed the most important resource in any country is labor right and the most important thing to any labor force it is education because if you don't have an educated labor force they're going to take twice as long or they're not even going to be capable of executing any real task i mean i could be wrong but let's have a conversation about this in the comment section and you know what? Here we're going on. You see, I know if y'all was paying attention to what was going on in, in, in the whole parliament recently, you know. But you see, I think a lot of what was going on in parliament is reflecting in what's going on right here, right now with this strike. I think this whole bickering and this strike thing was coming ever since the parliament was going on, you know. Because Priya and Miss McDonald was going back and forth, back and forth in the parliament so heavy. That the speaker had to step in a couple of times and ask them to calm down, ladies, calm down. The bickering was going on real deep between the two of them in Parliament. But you know what? I can let you listen for yourself. Listen to what was going on between Miss McDonald, the Honorable Minister McDonald, and the Honorable Priyamani Chan in Parliament. And then you're going to get an idea as to the foundation of what some of what's going on in this strike right now and the reason why I believe teachers ain't seeing the full compensation right now and they're not gonna see it is because of what 
might be going on right here. But let me get a listen and then let me have a conversation in the comment section. Uh, later in this house. Mr. Skin, Mr. Minister, please. I've seen our standing orders and, and I have before me even the British rules with respect to the particular issue we're dealing with. Uh, which I'll read later. John, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, because I would have asked that the member provide the information uh, later from this house. Mr. Speaker, we look at um, the same line I tell you. If that would clarify, so I'd be happy. Honorable Minister, please. Please. Into view when someone is speaking, you have to raise a point of order, not just when you feel like talking on a point of order, which I have been applying to everyone in this house, and you're no exception. I will remember Ms. McDonald. Oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Thank you, sir. On the line item 3601 again, uh, education, subventions, and grants. I recognize too that there is the Critchlow Labor College. Uh, would the minister be kind to share with us, um, because there's a sum allocated there for the Critchlow Labor College, whether the Critchlow Labor College will be receiving their subvention this year? And if that is so, um, whether we could ask them to apply for their subventions that they did not get last year? Honorable Minister. Wrong line item, sir. Thank you very much, Honorable Member Ms. McDonald. Honorable members, I now put a question that the sum stated for Program 401, Policy Development and Administration, current expenditure stands part of the estimates. Those in favor say aye. Those again say no. I have it, the sum stated stands part of the estimates. Honorable members, turn to page two, pages 200 and 201. And I propose the question that the sum stated for Program 402 Training and Development Current Expenditure stands part of the estimates. Honorable Member, Ms. McDonald. Mr. Speaker, on the line item 6112, Senior Technical, we've seen an increase, there a huge increase from 48 in 2023 so one to one in 2024 would the minister be kind enough to elaborate on this one honorable minister i'd be happy to elaborate sir the cppc government of ghana has taken a position that the only way we can change for the better output at the various levels of education nursery primary secondary as well as post-secondary would be to train more teachers and to train them at a higher quality. Having undertaken that program, we now have for the first time in the history of our country, 99% of our teachers trained or in training. We have um, raised the number of teachers who are able to train from 500 to now an indefinite amount. What we usually see is 2,000 to 2,500 in training. This line caters for um, 73, the increase of 73 staff, 65 lecturer two, eight senior lecturers at the Cyril Potter College of Education. That's where they will be paid. And we're very, very happy with this program. Uh, and our honorable members, there's also a standing order with respect to where information is available. So I think that is detailed in the TACOM 63 page also. Uh, honorable member, Mr. Child. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Line item 6302 training to the honorable minister. Minister, how are you utilizing this year's budgetary allocation? to guarantee that children in the hinterland receive the benefit of trained teachers. I know. Yes, it's a very good question. I'm happy that the MP is representing the people that he has been sworn and here to represent. 
Hither to this year, Mr. Speaker, we had 31 hinterland teachers being trained in regions one from regions one, seven, eight, and nine. We now have 1,011 teachers from regions one, seven, eight, and nine being trained. That means that we will have more teachers in those regions and teachers of a higher quality in those regions, improving the individual teachers' lives, the lives of each child in their classroom and their community and region as a whole. So I hope that answered the MP's question. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Minister. Honorable Member, Ms. McDonald. Mr. Chair, we've seen again uh, in 2023, Clerical staff, 6114, that's the heading, clerical and office support staff, 21 to 555. Could we ask the minister to lay over that for us, please? I must. I think I heard the question to be who this caters for. Let me ask the member to me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, could we ask the minister to lay over? who would fall, the persons who would fall under this category and to kindly lay over the salary ratings for us. Yes, right, but I'd be happy to also give a range and then I'll lay it over afterwards. Thank you, Ms. Typist clerks, data processing officers, uh, office assistants, clerk generals, receptionists, and so on. But we'd be happy to lay it over afterwards. Thank you, Minister. I right, remember. Just to follow up to that, Mr. Speaker, uh, could the minister say to us whether these data clerks, um, this, whether they are going to be posted to schools, how many schools, um, regions? Thank you. Minister. So under this program, they are. this is for CPC. This is a particular program, sir, um, the developmental program. But I'd be happy to tell the member that, the honorable member that, it is our intention to have data processing clerks at all schools. We are now implementing and rolling out the Education Management Information System, MS, um, which would be a, a game changer in our country's education system. And to do that, we will need data processing clerks across the country in every single school. So we will be doing that shortly. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Honorable Member. Mr. Chair. On the line item 6281, security services. We've seen quite a jump there. Could the minister indicate to us the security services, the security providers will be providing the security services and where? Yes, all our uh, contracts for security services are derived from public bids that we advertise in the newspapers and for all the world to see and that's how they're awarded the people the companies are which ones um rk security hussein security and verb well crafted cmos gummies nutritious delicious superfoods what's your favorite flavor <laughs> 